Hi everyone, this is Abera Koye from the Wealth Building CPA. Today we are going to have an open session. I'm really just answering any specific questions that anybody has about all that we've talked about in the last four weeks. For those that were not on the calls, we mainly discussed the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, we also discussed um, the different loans that were available, the EIDL, applying for unemployment, how the forgiveness works, how unemployment works with um, the PPP, who's qualified to apply and all that. Um, again, if you have not yet applied and you do qualify, money is still available. We don't know how long that is gonna last. Um, so what I wanted to focus on today is more so preparation. Um, because what I noticed in all of this was that those who were prepared, you know, with their documents, their financial statements, knew exactly where to find their stuff, were able to take advantage of these programs quickly. And most of these programs were closed like within four hours, two hours, 24 hours, five days, seven days, these programs were gone. But the people who were able to take advantage of them had their information ready. So one of the things that we want to look at um, is the fact that, you know, as a business owner, we do need to get into the habit of being prepared. You know, and when I say being prepared, like making sure that we're doing our, our monthly bookkeeping, you know, when it's time to file taxes, that we have that information ready. You know, we know exactly where our operating agreements are, our EIN letters, those permanent documents. Because what happens is that usually these things are not needed in the day-to-day -day operation of the business. But then when it's time to pursue a loan or where we had this kind of emergency and all that, um, if you don't have those things easily available, then it becomes difficult to be able to move quickly. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to go through today is really going through the wealth building program again because that's really designed from everything that I've noticed that we talked about. It's really designed to have you prepared and ready so that any time that you have to take advantage of something or you have a, a business emergency, you're able to react quickly. And so I don't want to assume that just because um, someone is in the wealth building program really means that they understand fully how the wealth building program works. Um, let me see if I can locate, um, locate that information on our website and then I'll share my screen. Um, before we do that, can everybody tell me how you're doing? You can send me a chat or speak publicly. How are you doing? Anything that I need to be aware of? Hi, Bear, it's Russ, I'm doing fine. Wonderful. Right. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Hi, Thomas, how are you doing? Let me share my screen. Uh, which one is it? All right, can everybody see my screen? I can. Okay, wonderful. All right, so what we're gonna go through now is I'm gonna talk about the overall wealth building program for um, those of you that are um, in it. I Like I said, I don't wanna assume that you're taking advantage of everything, so I just wanted us to go through it and then we will open it up for questions. So, um, we're talking about growing businesses deserve as much cash flow and asset protection as giant multinationals. So one of the things that we've, um, we've noticed is that small business owners, we tend not to have our own, you know, like board, executive board that we can go to to get advice because pretty much we're working by ourselves. And for those of us that are married, we have our spouse helping, but we don't really have like an executive board that we can go to to talk about our business. So the wealth building package was developed after seeing too many small business owners and real estate investors 
make mistakes simply because they did not have a CPA who knew how to integrate all aspects of wealth building. That's the purpose of wealth building is integrating all aspects of building wealth so that everything is one happening under one umbrella and you are actually building wealth. Um, so again, the wealth building program is a 12 month training program. I don't want to say it's actually a service program. I call it training because my goal is that through the process of interacting with us, we are able to educate you on the things that you need to do in order to be successful. So that even if I'm not here today and you had to go with another CPA or whatever, you know exactly the kind of questions um, that you need to ask. So it says, it says that the wealth building program is a 12 month training program that takes you step by step through the steps required to run a successful and efficient business. We've developed these systems after years of working with business owners on how to best use their professional skill, passion, and experience to pursue their entrepreneurial dreams. And we focus on different elements. So what I'm going to do right now is to go through those eight stages, and then I'll open it up for questions. So the first thing is that we do the financial needs analysis. Why do we do this? It starts by knowing what your goal is, how much time you have, how much money you have, what you have available um, in order to build wealth. Um, so the financial needs analysis really would look at all the assets that you have, the job that you have, your retirement goals, your family situation, the time that you have, and then we will craft a program that helps you build wealth. In some instances, when you come to the wealth building program or when you sign up with our service, you may already have some components of this, so there's no need for us to go through the financial needs analysis, or you are already in step to building wealth, and I just review everything and make sure that you continue to build wealth. So I don't know how many people on here, um, I don't know when was the last time that you did a financial needs analysis, but with everything going on in the economy and the uncertainty, I think this would be a good time to revisit it. If you don't want to do it with us, you can do it with a financial planner. You can do it with your spouse. Really, the goal is looking at how much money do you have? If we got into an emergency and the business and businesses were shut down again for another two months, is your business going to be able to survive? What do you need to do so that that business can survive financially? Two, how much time do you have? Do you have flexibility to be able to go to another job or do you have flexibility to start another business or even within the same business, offer another set of services. This is the time to reinvent the wheel. This is the time to look for different ways of doing the same things. If you've been doing buy and hold strategy, could you add another strategy to it? If you've just been focusing on wholesaling, do you wanna maybe think about you know, um, rehabbing? If you're used to doing real estate alone, do you wanna partner with others? So all these are the kind of analysis that you wanna do um, in the next, couple of weeks, it's, you know, this month of June, so that you are well prepared in case we have to deal with another unexpected event. Um, the next thing that we focus on is tax planning and preparation. During this stage, we take a look at your tax returns for the last three years. If we've been preparing your returns, we prepare them with utmost care and respect. Doesn't mean that we are mistake free, but you know, the goal is to make sure that you're not paying more than your fair share of taxes that we're utilizing all the loopholes out there that are available for you as an investor and a business owner in order to mitigate your tax liability. Um, the next stage that we look at is entity structuring. There's three reasons why entity structures exist. The first one is for asset protection, making sure that the wealth that you're building through your business is being properly protected by having the right entity having the right structure, the right people on there, the right insurance for that entity. The second reason is more for tax benefits. Um, depending on the kind of entity that you set up, um, it, it could potentially impact how much taxes um, that you pay. That's why usually for most of our clients, we usually do the multi-member tiered structure LLC um, in order to get that benefit. Then the next stage we look at is business registration and bookkeeping setup. This actually impacted a lot of people this time because a lot of people didn't have their operating agreements or if they had it, it wasn't signed or if it was signed, they could not find where it is. 
We also keep copies of all of your entity structuring documents. So it's important if you don't think that we already have it, please make sure that, first of all, you have permanent documents. I tell my clients to make sure you have physical copies and electronic copies that you can always refer to your business registration documents. And these business registration documents would be your articles of organization, the acceptance of filing from the state, the EIN letter. If you did an S Corp, the S Corp acceptance letter, if you did any kind of restructuring, the entity reclassification form and the operating agreement. So you wanna make sure that these five items that you have these items in your permanent record. Um, for those that are in PG County, Maryland, um, PG asked for a lot of these documents during their application and a lot of people did not have it and were not prepared and so we're not able to take advantage of the first round of um, grants that were available. Um, the next stage that we do is the business analysis meeting, which is what we're, we usually do May, June, is just to take a step back and see what are we doing, how is business performing, where you want to go in the future, any things that we need to address, steps and strategies. If I need to refer you to other business owners, other investors to give you advice on what you need to do. So all of that, we do that business meeting once a year, May, June. Um, is concentrated at time that we use to talk to everybody in the wealth building program to see how they're doing. Then stage six is assisting you with investment property because most of my clients are real estate investors. You're an investor because you're typically purchasing properties. So we assist you with purchasing properties, whether it's in your 401k, in your LLC, in your name, the kind of financing arrangements, the combinations that you need to do. Also making sure that that investment fits with your overall strategy and also making sure that you're doing your due diligence. Then the next stage that we look at is the retirement planning. So with all of us knowing that we're gonna retire someday, you know, the complexity and time that is required in building a successful plan, it can make it confusing and daunting. So we work with the financial planner and also work with you to look into retirement planning, to also look into developing um, you know, like retirement plans, like the 401k plans and stuff to enable you build your wealth. And then the last stage that we look at is the year end tax plan. And I tell people that April 15th is your tax filing deadline, but December 31st is your tax savings deadline. So anything that you don't put in place between now and December 31st, come January, between January and April 15th, we're pretty much just reporting. Um, so this in a nutshell are the different stages of the wealth building program. Um, so if you're not taking advantage of any of these stages, please reach out to us so that we can discuss. I will slide through them again and then we can open it up for questions. Again, like I said, um, people that were able to take advantage of this um, period were those who were prepared um, for this period. So now I'm going to open it up for questions. If you have any general questions, you can type it or say it out loud. And I'll just answer questions until we're ready to get off the phone. This may end up being a, uh, a shorter meeting if we don't have questions. And as things come to me, if I remember things as I was, um, yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk about is I noticed that a lot of clients did not think that they would qualify for the PPP because they don't have employees. You do not need to have employees to qualify for the Paycheck Protection Program. You, you can file for the Paycheck Protection Program even if you do not have employees. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. So it's um, the floor is open now. I'll take any questions until it's time for us to go. All right, while I'm waiting for the questions to come through, there is a Senate bill that has passed. They're just waiting for it to be signed where the, um, they're trying to extend the period that, that is used to, in terms of using the PPP loans. The rule right now is that with the PPP loans, um, you have eight weeks 
um, to use up the loan. But with the um, with the new law, I think they're going to extend it. They haven't said um, how long yet. They will extend it. So you will have more than eight weeks to use up the PPP loan. So this is just new information um, that is out there. Does anybody have any questions? All right, let me look through my notes to see if there's anything else that I wanted to bring to your attention. All right, so for those of you that have not yet filed your taxes, remember that the tax deadline was extended to, the, to July 15th. Um, it really has me for a loop because I don't know how to prepare, whether to prepare for tax season like I do March, April, or that it's just going to be even kill. We're going to make some decisions today. This is first time in 27 years of me being a, a tax accountant dealing with the July 15th deadline. So I don't know if we're going to be really, really busy or if people are going to file extensions or if you know people are just going to send their documents, ebbs and flows, if it, if it will even be extended again. Um, okay, am I aware of any grants that might be available to help start in a business after this pandemic? I'm not aware of any, but what I can tell you is that most counties have a corporation that is called Economic Development Corporation. There's also the SBA. So you want to check with the Economic Development Corporation for your county to reach out to them about starting a business. This is something that was already in place even before the pandemic. So I'm sure that they're probably going to have revisions and things that they're able to assist people with after the pandemic is over. But there's nothing yet that has come out to say if you want to start a business, um, this, this, this is the kind of help. So you'll still be going back to the regular channels that you have um, whenever you want to start a business. So like I said, the SBA um, are available to help out and then the, um, the Economic Development Corporation. And then also you can look into your Chamber of Commerce. There's also a SCORE. SCORE is where you have um, business owners that have retired and they're available to help out people with starting their business. That can be also another source of information. Will you have specific counsel for us on PPP loan forgiveness or should we reach out to our banks? Um, yes, I will have specific counsel on PPP loan forgiveness. I'm just not doing it immediately simply because I know that the rules are going to change. Um, I don't want to prepare something and then we have to do it all over again. So what we're looking at is starting next week, we're going to start to put the package together, the worksheet. There are several worksheets that are out there, but in terms of what's going to fit our clients and specific situations, we're going to start looking at that starting next week uh, because I'm hoping that there will be more guidance. I want to make sure that there's nothing that we're missing in terms of the application. It would also be good to reach out to your bank because if your bank already has some information out there, you can study it and you can also send it to us so we can study it and um, give you advice based on the specific things that the bank may require. What we're really telling people now is, you know, make sure you have the separate account, make sure you're tracking how you're making the payments, make sure that you're paying yourself based on the, you know, divide by 52 times eight because most of the people that are applying that are clients or self-employed people where you don't have employees. So as long as you're using those guidelines for now and then you can't use more than 25% for utilities, those are really the three or four guidelines in terms of the actual calculation and all of that. We're looking to start sometime next week.
All right, let me look here to see if I have any other information that I might be able to use. Okay, I really um, do not have any, um, I really don't have any other thing to share. Um, so unless anybody has anything else, we will probably be wrapping up in the next couple of minutes. Um, everybody here either already has a scheduled business meeting or has already had their annual business meeting. So if you have anything else that you want to discuss, um, you can feel free to reach out. And I will go ahead and stop the recording.